George, chapter 37. Isabel studied me, and I her. She'd grown tall and didn't much look like a girl anymore. She wore a blue checkered uh, checks short gown over a home top over top of a homespun uh, chemis and a and a grimy apron atop her black skirt. She wore the shoes on her feet that she had worn when we escaped New York, much scuffed now. A length of brown fabric was loosely wrapped uh, below her chin, hiding her cheek and covering her shoulders. A kerchief that was the same color covered by her hair, or covered her hair. Bellingham looked at me, then Isabel, then back at me. Do you not remember her? How much has she told him? If I pretended not to know her, he'd be suspicious. But if I admitted the truth, I might expose any lies that she had already been forced to spin. I touched the swollen knot on my head. My mind is still clouded, sir. She was Lockton's girl, Bellingham said. Lived on Wall Street? He stood up. Mayhaps that guard hit you harder than I thought. Now I recollect, he said. She is much grown. True enough. The din of stomping boots and loud voices in the front hall drew his attention. Blast, Bellingham began gathering up his papers in front of him. Quick, Curzon, close up all the books with the red leather bindings and stack them on the center table. Isabel, to the kitchen for wine. The wagon should be ready for you, but prepare the tray first. Isabel paused at the door that led to the kitchen and looked back at me. I could not tell uh, what she made of any of this. Hurry, ordered Bellingham. As she slipped out, the two gentlemen entered the hall, brushing snow from their wigs. These were the, con or they were the congressmen, but I did not know their names. You've returned early, Bellingham feigned with delight with a false smile. The younger fellow shivered once. A rider came from Albany with news. News about a scheme to unseat General Washington dis uh, disrupted all of the business of the day. Total rot, of course. The older man dropped into the chair with a groan and wiped his nose on a handkerchief. Is this your boy? He looks a bit worse for the wear. There was a misunderstanding after the trial, Bellingham said. The younger gentleman pointed to the papers in Bellingham's hands. Did you complete your study of reports? Bellingham set the papers down and straightened the cuffs on his shirt. I'd seen him do that countless times, always the way, or always when he was about to shade the truth in his favor. I want to go over the numbers again. The situation could be much worse than anyone imagined. He plucked the paper from the center table. These are the reports from Chester County. The gentleman with the damp nose held it up to his hands. Not yet, James. Please. Some food first. Agreed, the younger congressman sat next to him. Your boy won't serve, uh, serve table dress like that, will he? I should say not, Billingham said. He has an appointment with soap and clean clothes right now. You can go, Curzon, he said to me. I took three steps away from the table before he stopped me. One moment, he called. Have you forgotten how to take proper leave of your master? The word master was a musket ball ripping through my guts. I almost bolted for the fireplace and grabbed the poker so I could brain him. They'd catch me, beat me, maybe kill me, but I would have, er, but it would have been worth it except for Isabel. All three men stared at me, waiting. I stiffened my back and held my arms tight to my sides and bowed low, silently cursing every man in the room. Thank you, sir, I said, as I, uh, as I again stood straight. Will that be all? 